Let me lower this real quick. <laughs> I'm sitting here and wondering if okay, <laughs> trying to follow, figure out the buttons. It's been a little while for me. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. 904 here on the link. You're tuned in. And we've got a very special guest joining us in the Zoom room. Chef, very important chef, all the way out in California. Well, good morning and half a day to a former resident. Well, you can never be a former resident of Guam. <laughs> once, once, once you're six seven one, you're always six seven, six, seven, one, seven for one. life. So, Chef Charles Fan, half a day, and so good to see you. Happy holidays. Half a day. Thank you for having me. We're really excited about this because this is kind of like the culmination and the conclusion of our uh, diabetes awareness uh, campaign that we have been conducting since last week's Saturday. And so we're so excited to have uh, Chef Fawn uh, from the Slanted Door. He's the owner, he's the executive chef, but he does have a connection uh, to Guam, as Jason mentioned, because in 1975, um, he and his family, uh, they came through Guam through Operation New Life. And uh, since then, he's he's had this connection, uh, and hopefully we might have a surprise for him. We've he's had this connection since then. So thanks again, uh, Chef. Oh, thank you. Um, this is the closest thing coming back to Guam. So I, I need to get on a plane and uh, get to Guam soon. It's been way too long since 1977. Embarrassing to say, I have to admit. Well, oh. there may be two or three things that have maybe changed about the island. Like, we, we got this wonderful new uh, overpass near the airport. Uh, you, may, <laughs> you may have heard about that. Like, uh, we did a few stories on that about maybe uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, a couple <laughs> new malls, some megaplexes. But, you know, the, the island pride, like, still remains, Chef. And um, something I'm sure you're intimately familiar with, the, the fact that food for our people is, is so much more than, you know, just nourishment. I mean, it's a form of social currency. Uh, it's the way that we communicate, you know, it's it's how we make peace. It's um, it means so much to our people, especially now, you know, as as we're embarking on the holiday season. Uh, yes. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, you know, my my dad passed away with diabetes. So I'm intimate. Um, and, and it's a very serious issue. So I'm hoping today um, I can just show you um, something uh, to make food something quick and fast and how to do stir fry and i keep it really simple i get a little bunsen burner um, um so th I, I think the whole goal is to just eat more fiber right. more vegetable and if you can figure out how to make this stuff quick and tasty so hopefully you would do it mm -hmm. and i wanted to talk about um, uh you know, before we get into uh, what you have, uh, what you're going to be preparing and, and sharing with our our viewers and our listeners, uh, you mentioned your dad, right? Your dad had uh, passed away from di diabetes. Um, if you could just tell me about that whole journey for you and your, your family. Uh, dad, uh, he was 85, so uh, he was getting up there in age, but... Um, and he had diabetes for a number of years, and the doctor tried to control that and uh, mm -hmm. tell him to cut back on rice. And I just remember he just loved to eat his rice and uh, and uh, pork belly. I think it was <laughs> that's another thing he likes a lot. Um, so the doctor say, "Well, how many bowl of rice do you eat?" And he say five. And and uh, the doctor say, "Well, you got to cut back the one bowl." And, um, and he came back and a month later his you know it didn't move and it turns out he got a bigger bowls and um <laughs> and it started with a little infection in his toe then it just went south from there went to the hospital then they want to amputate his leg and it just on and on and um um then there's just more sickness while his hospital staff infection and so on so so it's it's um so once you have diabetes, you you have all this other ailment that you can't really control. Like just you can't even have a um, uh, fix an infection on your toe. Um, that's that. Um, so you don't want to get there. You don't want to get there. So you need to 
um, as, as we all know, you know, we're, we're more likely to get diabetes um, uh, from our diet and our gene. So um, that's, I'm, I'm not a doctor. So from little I know, um, you know, you just need to eat more fiber, um, less, less um, sugar, processed sugar. Um, and I think a lot of the Vietnamese cooking and um, is most of the time we use meat as a condiment. So we don't use meat as the main course. So of course you go to a steakhouse, you get a 16 ounce ribeye and you get a little bit of small bowl of spinach and whipped cream. So the opposite of that kind of eating. So uh, my goal today is just to uh, get folks to see how easy it is to um, stir fry um, something uh, and, and make tasty food, but not have to use a lot of processed food. Um, uh, if you, and, and I know you're going to eat rice and we all can't stop eating rice, but maybe we change to um, short grain and or um, brown rice so that a whole grain will, will have more fiber and help with your, uh, your sugar intake. Mm. Okay, so Chef, how did, how did that experience um, uh, change your own approach to, you know, the selection of different ingredients and, and the preparation of food and, you know, um, uh, and cooking for yourself as well as, as well as clients. I, I think that, um, you have to go back to our history of culture. We're like come from a very humble beginning. We're poor. So, you know, you eat a lot of rice and you don't eat a lot of meat and vegetable because they think that's more expensive. And um, but rice is such a central part of the uh, Asian culture. Um, I was just reading the New York Times how the Japanese we eat seven times more rice than the Mexican uh, per capita. I mean, I, that, it was just uh, I think last weekend in the New York Times. I can't quote uh, who wrote that article. It was amazing. In fact, rice was brought into uh, Mexico to the Spaniard. Uh, um, so, so it's just culturally, we are trained to eat with a lot of rice and we don't realize by doing that and, you know, it have an adverse effect to our health. So now we know, so we just got to eat a lot more vegetable and fiber and, and not, um, eat a lot of starch. Uh, because I think I, I'm also a product. I love my rice. Mm -hmm couple rice, white rice, but also I think we forget that in Asia, there's so many different rice that you will eat brown rice or red rice during the day. So you're, you're having different intake. And because we are just kind of all fall into the trap of buying stuff from big box store, a uh, big club store that we buy 50, hundred pounds of the same rice shipping in from Thailand. Uh, and I think you, we just need the diversity to diversify uh, our food and, you know, uh, maybe do a research and buy rice from Carolina. There's popcorn rice from Texas, uh, but there's different varietal. And I think in India and um, so in Guam, I, I know it's a little harder to get shipping there, but, but I think just important um, the different type of rice, but also the amount. So if you actually put all the bowl of rice into one plate and, and you take a photograph of it, you realize like how much food you eat because when you eat family style, you're not going to know that how much you eat because everything's a little pieces. You, you don't have a plate in front of you. So you pick at it, uh, at least in my family, uh, kind of eating ch like a ch in a Chinese restaurant. So, so I think it's kind of important that you pay attention to the volume of food you eat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just, it's like drug, right? It's so tasty. You just keep going at it. And next thing you know, you're eating four times more food than you ought to eat. So I, I think that's also important. But but also, we all want to make flavorful food. It's one of the joy in life. So so if you do, you know, maybe you put more vegetable and you end up eating more vegetable and cut out the rice. And at least you're not, you know, you, you pick the lesser of two evil. If you're going to eat a lot, might as well eat a lot of vegetable, I think you know, Chef, uh, I told you that we were going to try and make this connection happen. Um, and we actually have uh, someone from your past uh, in our Zoom room. Uh, let's bring in uh, local attorney Sam Tecker. I believe he is in the Zoom room. 
There, there he is. Oh, there he is. And so you guys <laughs> share somewhat of a connection. Um, when uh, you and your family, uh, Chef, came to Guam in the 70s, uh, the Tecker family actually adopted you guys. So say hello, uh, gentlemen. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How you doing? Oh, my God. Um, yes. Um, I, we're, our family is already indebted to the Tecker, um, 1975. Uh, I think Karen was, uh, was told, uh, uh Larry, uh, years later, I got the story from Larry, uh, Larry told Karen not to come back with more than two people because they have one bedroom that they can uh, help out. And, um, and needless to say, I think Karen and met my aunt and uncle and decided to take my aunt and uncle. Then, that I think my aunt go get her to see the rest of family. So uh, Karen came home with 11 people uh, instead of two. So um, it, it, it's just amazing history and we're always indebted. And uh, I remember uh, going to work. I ended up staying in, in uh, Windward Hill in Talakufu. And uh, Sam, I think was five years old at the time. Um, I think I just gave out your age, Sam. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, I, re I remember there weren't a lot of store, and I remember I have to feed Sam with Chef Boy RD. That was the only thing in the cover. Um, and um, yeah, that was my memory of Guam, you know, it's just, uh, and playing in, at the Windward Hill golf course. Uh, it, it, it was just fond memory, and we left there in 1977. Sam, what's your your uh, memory of uh, Chef? Well, I, I remember um, not too much, but I remember Fawn. Fawn was uh, the auntie, and uh, Fawn taught me how to say uh, one through ten in Chinese. I can still remember it. I think it's Yat Ni San Si Un Lo Chop Bat Kao Sat. And then... Uh, <laughs> The Fun family is uh, is very dear to us, and you know my parents uh, they're the uh, ones that did it all. And um, the Fun family went on to greater things, and uh, we're just so proud of them and glad that there's a connection. And uh, my parents are glad that they could do what they could do. And uh, we just we love the Fonz and uh, Charles. I hope to see you soon uh, when this COVID thing ends. Yes, yes, yes. We got to go back to Windward Hill and play some golf. I'm horrible at it, but we got to do that. <laughs> well, Chef, chef the, the, the immaculate uh, condition of that golf course has not changed. I mean, that, that's still that's still a great course to play on. And, and I'll just fantastic. say that there is a history of diabetes on Dad's side. Uh, I wish he could be on you know, the diabetes and on in our family, but uh, he's not here today. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to cook, Charles. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I, I read one chef and, you know, Sabrina and I have been interviewing people on the show for, you know, like uh, for 20 years now. And, you know, the hardest thing to do is to get a chef to keep still in the kitchen and everything like that. So you, you've been quite reserved so far in this interview. So I was going to say, please, chef, you know, like, this is your gift and everything. So just do your thing. OK, shall I? Shall I start cooking? Charles, I have to get up because I have a hearing, but uh, my mom is watching, I think. So uh, you could say hi to her. All right. Hi, Karen. <laughs> uh, and SUNY, too. Um, and Lisa. Um, all right. So stir fry. We're going we're to talk Sam. about stir fry. Uh, and Chef, try not, to, fry. try not to get some of those, uh, some of those uh, tears of joy into your ingredients, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so people, um, what, like, how do you do stir fry? So stir fry, basically, the, the trick is, figure out which ingredient to cook first so that you you don't you don't make end up like a big mushy thing so so what i got here is a little pork but i mean a little pork shoulder i could cut out uh any meat right i got a little chicken like thigh meat i cut out with a little skin on it's okay uh i um you know frozen shrimp um i'll bet you probably don't have shrimp in guam i don't know but Shrimp's hard. These are coming from New Orleans. They're frozen. It's fine. So what you do is you uh, you cut everything and and you um, you know put a little marinade um, first by uh, put a little oil and um, meanwhile I get the pan going 
um, in a in the Chinese tradition, you you put a little cornstarch. Uh, it's got a little coating. I got a little rice wine, uh, not mirin, like sake. Um, so mirin's got a little bit of sweetness. So I I don't like that very much. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't like the the sweetness and just a little rice wine to marinate. So the trick to all this is, if you're gonna do it with with some kind of broccoli, these are all harder. So you want to cook the meat first, and and the whole point it's all this layering. So what I do now, I heat up the pan, um, and don't be afraid to use a lot of oil, right? You're not gonna eat all this oil. A little wasteful, but it's okay. You can strain it, and and uh, by by heating it up um, this way. Uh, you're gonna cook your shrimp a little bit more even. This is more oil than you want to eat, but it's okay because you're gonna strain it out, right? So I'm just gonna, it doesn't matter what pan you have, uh, electric stove, fancy stove, expensive stove, cheap stove. The whole point is you just gotta watch it and wait till this thing is really hot. And the trick is, is not to overwhelm the system. So if you have a, um, uh, a, a small stove, and electric so not going you just got to wait right and don't put too much product so i'm going to do maybe the broccoli and the uh, and 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 the shrimp today so so i made a little uh what did I do? a little salt a little cornstarch um got a little coating a little rice wine that sound is always the best part <laughs> yeah Flatter a little bit, stand it back. Um, and you want to just brown this. Uh, you want to cook this to 80, 90% done, not all the way. Um, like you just want to brown it so that um, it gets this caramelization into the pan that it'll, it'll make it. Now, if you're doing beef, same thing, mm -hmm. but make sure you don't marinate it with soy sauce and ginger, all that, because it's going to burn it. So the actual trick is do not, I only put a little uh, rice wine and, and cornstarch, uh, not even fish sauce, because you gotta caramelize all that thing. You don't want that. You just, you wanna do the sauce on the second half, right? So if you're gonna cook a peppercorn steak, you don't put the peppercorn and cream steak together mm -hmm. and, and cook the steak. You cook the steak, then you make the sauce afterwards. Kind of same idea, right? So now I brown this, like now it's beautiful. And now I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna drain everything into this bowl, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and I forgot to chop some garlic, uh, you know, with the TV show, should I have just pound it? Right. It actually have an effect on the garlic, the way you're pounding it, the oil come out. So now I just put back exactly the amount of oil I want to eat, right? Mm -hmm. Now I got this, all this flavor in here, and now I'm going to put the vegetable. Now this is a hard vegetable. If it's a bok choy, then I don't need to steam it. Mm -hmm. But now this is hard, I need to steam it to get it soft. I put a little uh, chicken stock or water, then I put a lid on this thing, so I steam it. So you basically try to cook everything to its perfection and you assemble it together, right? So now you wait a little bit. Now your your vegetable, it's, it's steamed and it's getting tender. If it's spinach and things like that, you don't need to do it. Bok choy, you just put it in there, you cook it and it's done, right? But because it's the hard green bean or broccoli, you need, you need to uh, soften it up, right? Mm -hmm. So now, now I want this evaporation to happen. Now it's got nice steam, maybe a little salt, a uh, little fish sauce, you know. And and don't worry about measuring it. Just, you know, taste it as you go. Obviously, you saw what I did, a little dash. You can always add more. And now I'm going to dry out all the sauce, right? And 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 dry, uh, and dry out, and I can even check it. Always check your food. Now, it's crunchy. Um, if you don't have any teeth, then you need to cook a little longer. Um, 
uh, if you want a softer or you have, don't have heat, right? And and it's up to you, right? And it, 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 it's all up to you what you want. I like Let's it say crunchy. You like crunchy because yeah, you got like a lot crunchy. of teeth, right? So <laughs> <laughs> a little chili pepper, you know, you can make that up. And now you can finish this off fast, like that. Mm -hmm. So now you don't have all that grease. It's just going to come back beautifully. That's it. You got a meal. Super easy. Looks affordable, too. It's literally, and it'll take did... you longer to cut and chop this thing than cooking this mm -hmm. thing. He did that whole thing in about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so now you have all this vegetable and beautiful aroma. It's all, all about harnessing that wok, that saute pan. It's not soggy. Everything is crispy and flat. And, uh, you know, so, so again, um, do not marinate with soy sauce and all that stuff. You get, because you're going to make a mess. Because with the hot pan, you're going to make a mess um, with the soy sauce because the soy sauce will burn. Uh, the soy sauce will burn um, the the meat, right? So you want to just um, like here. I would I would just spoon like like about what is that? One teaspoon, a little bit of that, mm -hmm. and just to coat everything, a little rice wine or just a little liquid, a uh, little salt. That's it, right? And of course, a little oil. And now you have this uh, uniform coating on this meat, and you could fry it to this beautiful golden brown. Um, and and let's say, um, let's say we wanna make something with gravy, right? We could, we want, let's say, you know, how we like our gravy in our culture, then you do the same thing. You gotta just heat this up and um, brown it. Uh, then you put the, uh, you take a little cornstarch again, you make a slurry. Um, so um, I, I would, um, okay, I would dump this out, get a fresh bowl here. Mm -hmm. So I would make maybe two of these and just double up uh, either chicken sock or that. Now, this ratio is not that important. That's this ratio it's just a guideline. You don't know if it's too much or too little. So what you do is you got to cook it. And it, as it gets gooey, it gets too gooey, you just add more chicken stock. So that don't worry about like how much to measure. It's just enough to 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 dissolve this 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 cornstarch, right? So so again, now I got my pan hot. I fry my chicken. And I I, I can do all the stuff. Just waiting, wait until it caramelized. When it's caramelized, uh, then it just firm up all the edges. It gets you a little color. Then you can add all this other thing. And mm -hmm. once you get the gravy, that's when you can add the fish sauce. You can add soy sauce and however you want to adjust it and going over a bed of spinach. Or you can just steam the green bean. You don't have to stir fry it. You want to do a little cleaner, steam the green bean, have a better green bean. Or you just have a pile of chicken with gravy and green bean on the side and with your rice, you know, and 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 um, and it's actually quite fun when you're not always eating white rice because you're getting different textures. You're, you're getting um, so just wait a little bit. Um, I know I'm resting on the TV show, but get it caramelized and not worry about the skin. Everybody don't eat the skin. The skin's the best part. And again, you just got to worry about how much you eat. So eating a little bit of skin is, is, is going to be much better than you eating like, you know, 15 chicken thighs. So if you eat too much chicken, then you overeat, right? So so for me, it's about having fresh food, be able to make this food. But lastly, let's say you really don't have anything and you're in the woods, in the jungle, and all you got is don't have fresh food. Maybe you get a can of sardines, right? And, and some vegetable, you can find some rice. So you can get your protein so many different ways. It does not always have to have meat. Um, and, and you know, I came 
on a boat from Vietnam. We eat a lot of canned food. I eat a lot of spam. It's one of my favorite things. But you can use spam uh, sparingly with your vegetable as a delivery vehicle to to your uh, vegetable. Because, you know, I don't believe you not eat spam. I love spam, right? So, again, I got here. So, now I don't want to overcook the chicken. So, I'm going to pull this off. Right? I pull this off. Now I make my gravy. Now I can take my time and make my gravy. Maybe I deglaze a little, little chicken stock, a uh, little rice wine. Then, then I use this and I wash it. Right? And now, okay, I need more gravy because Uncle Bob just loves gravy, right? <laughs> so now you got more gravy. Um, so fish sauce, now taste your food, right? Um, is that thick enough? Not thick enough, right? Then you add more cornstarch. Mm -hmm. But enough flavor. Now you just add a little bit. You know, you don't want to turn into like Elmer's glue or anything like that. You know? <laughs> so you just want to have like the right kind of soft consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, then now you add this back and now you have chicken and gravy. Now, uh -huh. now, if you go to the store and buy a little black bean sauce, mm -hmm. don't buy the can because that's 10 times more more expensive. If you just buy a straight up black bean sauce, uh, preserved black bean in Chinatown, mm -hmm. then you just soak it. Don't be afraid just because they don't have all these label, uh, you know, uh, some of the best stuff is just really traditional way of packaging and not have all these preservative. And I think, as you know, diabetes, it's about processed food or processed sugar. If you just cook everything from scratch, if you make a black bean sauce, you can cut back on the black bean, you can add more chili, and now, you know, now you have chicken and gravy and a and, and little bit of rice, a lot more vegetable, uh, get more beans into your diet. I, I think it's just really fun to do. And once you understand the basic concept, and by the way, you know, you can look uh, look me up on, I don't know, on the internet and recipe are in the internet. Uh, the New York Times has some. Uh, and, and I do have two book out, not that I'm pushing to sell my book, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there are a lot of books out talking about, you know, these basics. If you read them, my first book is Roll Up Basic Stir Fry and Grilling. So the key is you understand these principles, which one comes first, which one you cook first, right? I mean, obviously now you have this, maybe you get another pan, you saute the, the bok choy, then, then you have a bed and you lay that on top. So you really you know, have all these infinite ways to, to, to make your food and salt, salt intake, you know, and sometimes the doctors say you got to cut the salt, then you just got to cut the salt. And this is up to you now because you make everything yourself mm -hmm. and you don't have to make it salty and it's all, and you just taste as you cook. All right. So anyway, you guys want to check out the slanted door restaurant. Uh, it is made chef Charles, um, immensely famous very very in demand uh it's in the bay area it's at slanted door on instagram um the feed the feed itself is worth the price of admission some uh, some amazing pictures like a food there and obviously uh prepared with love there's a lot of um a lot of good things behind it and everything like that chef thank you for sharing your gift with us uh today and happy holidays to you and your family and your team well thank you uh we're we're uh, under construction uh just a little fy so you won't be able to get slanted door until next fall, um, but we'll we'll be back. We have one restaurant in the East Bay, but if you come to the mainland, um, there's some food you can eat, but the main flagship is a little close. But I, I'm I want to thank you for having me. I, I can't wait to get back to Guam. It's always been dear to me, um, um, and, you know. And um, I think first place I I learned from a, a song from the Ego. Uh, that's how I learned about uh, English. And, and it's just, um, uh, it, it, it thrilled me every time when I hear something from Guam. So thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Chef. And we do hope that you'll be able to come and, and visit Guam. And I'm sure uh, the techers certainly would love to see yeah. you as well. Uh, we've got a barbecue plate waiting for you, Chef, when, well, <laughs> upon your arrival, for sure. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Thank you. All right. Take care. Again, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Chef. Happy, happy holiday.
All right, that looked good. And if you guys weren't able to see that, you could check it out on the Facebook Live Walkthrough Chef's Process. Try it out yourself. We're all trying to eat healthier, especially uh, going into the new year. That's right. Uh, Stay tuned. uh, More on the link after the break.